Good morning. My name is Rob Lowry. I'm the pastor here at Fondren Presbyterian Church, and it's my joy to welcome you to worship with us this morning. Today is the third Sunday in the season of Lent, and during this season, we are focusing each week on a different spiritual practice or different spiritual focus. Today, our focus is an unusual one for Lent. Normally, the subject for today's service is reserved for the Sunday after Easter. Today we will be celebrating the image of Christ as our Good Shepherd. Typically, Good Shepherd Sunday, as it is known, comes after Easter when the 23rd Psalm and John chapter 10 arrive in the lectionary, but this year felt like a good time to break the rules a little as we enter into the second year of our pandemic shutdown. It has been now 52 weeks since the last time we worshiped together in the church. As we enter into that year, it seems like a good time for a reminder that we are indeed cared for and loved by our Good Shepherd. So friends, this morning I invite you to sit back, to lean in, to worship, join in the responsive readings, Join in the singing if you feel called to do so, or let the singing simply surround you in your home. However you encounter God's word this morning, my prayer is that it will be a blessing for you. Now, friends, as we prepare to come together in worship and song and in word, let us remember that God is our good shepherd and promises to be with us and for us on our journey in life. Let us worship God.
my shepherd will supply my need. Jehovah is his name. In pastures fresh, he makes me feed beside the My shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. When I shades of death, your presence is my stay. One word of your supporting breath drives all my fears away. Your hand inside of all Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The short provisions of my God attend me all my days. Oh, may your house be my abode, and all my work be Let us pray. O God, our great shepherd, you tenderly gather us as lambs, carrying us all with your all-embracing love. Yet like sheep we wander from you, following our own ways, ignoring your voice, distrusting your provisions. Forgive our stubborn rebellion our hardened hearts, our lack of trust. Refresh us once again by your quiet waters of mercy and restore our souls by your redeeming love. Guide our paths that we might follow you more closely. Loving God, for those things that we have done 
those things we have left undone, those things we have said, and those things we should have left unsaid. Tender Shepherd, hear our prayers. For the church you call into a life of service, even unto the point of death, forgive our timidity when we seek institutional survival over a life together of service. When our worship serves our needs rather than praising your good works and your love in the world. When we give way to fear rather than anchoring ourselves in hope on your promises. Tender Shepherd, hear our prayers. for our place in this community where so many are in need. Forgive us those times when we are lulled into complacency and those times when we are paralyzed by the sheer amount of work to be done. Tender Shepherd, hear our prayers. Lord, have mercy, Lord, For our nation so wondrously diverse, forgive our compulsion to build walls around rather than bridges between communities of your children. Forgive us for missed opportunities and neglected chances to become together as one people. Tender Shepherd, hear our prayers. Friends, this is the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
that our Lord God takes care of us and guides us as our true leader and shepherd. God walks with us and continues with us on the journey to our own cross. Christ sharpens our focus that our attention may center more on God than on ourselves. The Spirit leads us through the shadows of darkness and prepares our hearts that we might be a people of prayer, ready to perceive and to respond to the needs of our world revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Put another way, friends, we are the sheep of our Good Shepherd's sheepfold, and we will never be forgotten. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, open our hearts and our minds that as your word is read and proclaimed, it may truly be a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Don't be a sheep. Think for yourself. How many of us have heard that at least one time in our lives? Don't be a sheep. Sheep is somehow one of the worst insults that we feel as a culture 
we can impose on one another. Oh, so-and-so is just a sheep. Oh, that group, they're just sheep. Sheep get a really bad rap culturally for us. And for a bunch of people who, frankly, don't spend a lot of time with sheep, you know, we say a lot of bad things about them. So why is that? Why do sheep somehow get this bad rap? Well, there are a lot of reasons for it. Part of it is their behavior. If you've ever seen sheep being herded, they tend to run in a flock. They tend to run and turn and move in a generally consensus direction. The group comes together and they just follow. But there's another reason, I think. There's a perceived gentleness to sheep. At least there is to little lambs. Big sheep can get a little ornery, but a small little lamb is just one of the cutest, most gentle things we can think of. So in a way, it makes sense that sheep get this bad rap in our culture. This year, my study group, for the first time ever, had a fantasy football league, and the last place trophy, which I am very proud to say I won, is called the Sheepy. Your name gets written in with the year you lost, on one of these little sheep. Now, I have to say that I hold that award as a badge of honor because my fantasy football league is made up of preachers and social workers. So let me ask you this, what do you think was harder, to come in first or to manage to be dead last among that group? But still, the poor sheep get put on the loser trophy Sheep just get a bad rap in our culture. Which makes it kind of strange then, as Christians, that one of the most compelling images we have for Jesus is shepherd. We had this cultural contempt for sheep, but we lift Jesus upon this high pedestal as shepherd. Kind of a strange combination of instincts for us, isn't it? Yes and no. This idea of Jesus as our good shepherd is one of those that is so rooted in the biblical witness that it's difficult to imagine it not being part of our understanding of Christ. Those wonderful passages we've heard today, Psalm 23, the most well-known passage of all of Scripture, and John 10, one that rings a bell immediately when it's heard, are texts about Christ as the shepherd. They're also texts about Christ as a comforting and nurturing and enveloping presence for us. You see, shepherds, shepherds had a, a particularly important role to play in ancient Near Eastern culture. Shepherds were not merely charged with guarding and keeping the sheep. They were also charged with keeping them from harm. See, sheep have a way of, of wandering off. That's part of the reason we had this cultural bias against them problem. We say, so-and-so is acting like a sheep. They'll see something interesting over there and then just start walking off toward it. And all of a sudden, the sheep is lost. But then the shepherd has to come and drag the sheep back into the scene again. Part of the shepherd's responsibility is precisely that. It is to sometimes save the sheep from themselves and from their own curiosity. But the shepherd has a particular role in that the, protect, the shepherd's responsibility is for that flock. The flock that is gathered around the shepherd who cares for them and nurtures them and leads them. And that's the good shepherd we celebrate today. Now, it's not a perfect metaphor. It's not a perfect metaphor because sometimes harm does come to the flock. Our particular flock has been scattered for a year now across the globe. Now, Christ is still our good shepherd, but a great deal of harm has come to many of the sheep in the fold. 
How do we square those things? How do we square the promises of the Good Shepherd to care for and be with and nurture and watch over the sheep and the reality in the world that sometimes bad things befall the sheep? It's like that theological conundrum that faces us from time to time. What do we do when bad things happen to good people? You know, that book that's so well known by that same title, When Bad Things Happen to Good People, written by Rabbi Kushner, is often misunderstood as saying why bad things happen to good people. But the book is actually about when good things happen. Why is not the question we're called to answer. The question is, what do we do when? What do we do when those good things happen, those bad things happen to good people? That's the question facing us right now as members of this gathered flock of Jesus Christ who are in the midst of this ongoing worldwide human crisis. What do we do while this bad thing is happening to so many good people? Maybe a more pointed question is to say, what is Jesus doing? After all, Jesus is the good shepherd. I'm not, you're not. We are the sheep in this situation. Now, yes, I recognize that part of my role as a pastor is to be a shepherd to my congregation, but I'm not taking Jesus Christ's place, thanks be to God. That's not a job I could ever hope to fulfill. My vocational role as a shepherd is very different than Christ's role as a shepherd, just as yours is in the world as well. No, we are the sheep in this metaphor. We are the gathered flock in this metaphor. And our good shepherd is supposed to be watching over us. And now, 52 weeks since the last time I stood here and preached a sermon, then to pews that had people in it, not empty like they are today with a camera in front of me. I kind of want to ask my shepherd, are you sleeping on the job? Do you, do you see what's happening? Are you, are you paying attention to what's going on around here? The answer, of course, is yes. There is never a moment when Christ, our good shepherd, is asleep at the wheel or asleep on the job. The challenge for us today is not to somehow wake up our good shepherd and get him to work. And it's not somehow to figure out a way to get the good shepherd to do what it is we want the good shepherd to do in this moment. Now one year into this changed reality, our call today is to rethink what it means for Christ to be our good shepherd. What does it mean today? More than 500,000 American deaths and countless millions of deaths worldwide into this global pandemic. What does it mean to say Christ is the good shepherd and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep? What does it mean to say that in this context? Any thoughts? Any brilliant ideas you'd like to scream at the screen right now? Believe me, I'm listening if you're speaking. I'll take any insight you have to offer because this, friends, is a question I wrestle with every day. I wrestle every day with trying to figure out where and how Christ is present in this moment. This moment when so many around us are suffering. This moment when so many of us are afraid, frustrated, just sick of it. Where we ask, is Christ in this moment? Well, 
Usually, when I do a sermon like this, I tell you that I'm not going to give you the answer. That I'm just going to ask a question at the end, and I'm going to turn the camera off like I did last week. But this week, I'm going to cheat just a little bit with you. Because I think this week, there's an answer to the question. Where is Christ in the middle of all of this? Where is our good shepherd in the middle of all of this? For we sheep, we weak, vulnerable sheep who are in need of our shepherd. Where is the shepherd? Right here. Right here. And right there, and there, and there, and there, and there. Wherever Christ's sheep are in need, Christ is present. What's so interesting about the scriptures that talk about Christ or God as shepherd and us as the flock is that it never gives us a promise that nothing bad will ever happen to the sheep. The promise is that nothing will ever happen to us alone. Never lost in the wilderness, never cut off entirely from the flock, never beyond the shepherd's care. Things will happen to us. Nature will continue to unfold. The frailty of human life will remain a reality no matter what happens. But in all of that, in all of that, The good shepherd is right there with us. Even when we can't see him. Even when we can't feel him. Even when we doubt him. The good shepherd is right there with us. There's a great part of the drive (coughs) of my trip to North Carolina to where my study group meets up in the mountains. There's a mountain road that you drive down into a long valley. And the road through the valley is the only straight piece of road you get for about 90 miles. And it's a little over a mile long. And one year I stopped at the end of the valley and turned around and looked back at where I'd just driven. I could not have ever imagined the beauty of the mountains I had just driven over, the road that wound and the hairpin turns back and forth and back and forth up the mountains and down the mountains and up the mountains and down the mountains that got me to that straight road in that valley until I had finished that journey through that valley and looked back. I had no sense of the majesty of where I had just been. Friends, so it is with so much of our living in this world. It's not until we turn around and we can look back with perspective that we can begin to see all of the pieces, all of the moments we have lived through come together. So today what I invite you to do is Take a few moments and look back over the last 52 weeks. The last 52 weeks of mask wearing. The last 52 weeks of praying for immunizations. The last 52 weeks of praying for friends and neighbors. The last 52 weeks of counting the cases every day. The last 52 weeks of worrying what was going to come next. The last 52 weeks of wondering, where's my good shepherd? Take a moment and look back down through this valley we are in right now at the road we have just driven and look for those places there in hindsight where you can see the goodness and the mercy of God at work. Because, friends, we can't always see it in the moment. 
but it is always there. Always there because God in Christ Jesus is our good shepherd. And we, the sheep of his sheepfold, vulnerable, wandering though we may be, we are yet beloved and cared for. And in all of that travel that brings us to this moment, never forgotten. That is the promise of our tender shepherd. That is the promise of our loving God. Amen. Friends, knowing that God has promised to walk with us and hearing the challenge to follow Jesus, living out for us in the gospel of Jesus Christ, let us dedicate ourselves to God and to Christ in song and in praise and promise to follow him. Now, friends, in the knowledge that the Good Shepherd Jesus Christ walks with us each and every step of the way, let us go now, committed to walking with our Good Shepherd, Christ Jesus, our Lord, today and every day. And in one voice may all God's children say, Amen.